well, boxing. Join us, everybody. And uh, good evening, Ander. Evening, fella. So, obviously, we've got a lot to talk through from last week's big fight and also the stacked cards that are coming up this weekend with BT and DAZN going up against each other. Yeah, yeah. But first, we're going to have a chat about, obviously, Carl Greaves, aren't we? Have a chat about his card, um, which I think is real, real good value for money. Some proper 50-50 fights on there as well. So, like we normally do, I'll hand it over to you to start looking at the card and talking us through it. Um, over to you. Well, as always, mate, um, anyone that knows Carl Greaves, anyone that's been to Carl Greaves shows, knows what kind of quality show he puts on. They're always top draw, and the headliner on this show proves that. Um, so Kyle Award is the current uh, Midland area super welterweight title holder. Yep. Uh, he's from Leicester, and he's going in against Ryan Amos from Nottingham. This is a this is a fight that was postponed from earlier on in the year, wasn't it? Because uh, Kyle got an injury. Who are you wanting to win this one, Ander? Wow! Because obviously you... a Amos is a local lad. Yeah, you know, you know what, mate. I, having had having had conversations with a number number of people from each camp, they're all saying how close this fight's going to be. Yeah, they're all saying, you know, and you normally you get a bit of favoritism, don't you? And a bit, a bit of oh yeah, my guys well up for it. And but everyone's saying how close this fight's going to be. I mean, you've only got to look at Kyle Haywood's. The, the fight we went to last time at um, at the Morningside Arena, Kyle Awood against Alex Ferron, uh, I think it's spelt, or Ferron. What a fight that was. What a fight that was. Unbelievable. One of the best fights I've seen live, if I'm quite honest. And uh, I get the feeling this is going to be very similar. So that on its own is worth anybody going to see. What I would say is, talk about value funding. We've never been let down by a Carl Greaves show, have we, in yeah. terms of quality? And, and I'd throw Scott Callow into that mix yeah. as well. You know, the small old seed, you get some real umdingers, don't you, where you both know, fighters are coming to win. A lot of a lot of, of boxing fans, small old shows will be going under their radar because they're getting these larger shows kind of force-fed to them, aren't they? Yeah. A little bit. And that's not being disrespectful to boxing fans at all. Um, but the, the smaller all shows will just go under the radar. You know, if they're not following the likes of Cole Greaves or one of the fighters, you're not likely to know about it. Um, but yeah, I I really do I really do want to emphasize to, to fight fans, if you're from the Midlands area, this is an absolutely outstanding show. Always is from Cole Greaves. There's some brilliant talent. If you want to know where the next the next load of British talent's coming from, go to small old shows. Just because the, the bigger shows have all the stars coming from Team GB and all that, don't forget that the small these small old fighters, they've all these are all guys that have been going into the gym from being kids. A lot of them really good amateurs themselves. I'll go through a few on the undercard in, in a little bit. And there's some proper, proper talent. Um, they're just not getting pushed as quick because they don't have this massive focus like a DAZN fighter, sorry, a matchroom fighter on DAZN or a, a, a Warren fighter on BT that are getting the real big pull list there. Just because they're not getting that, don't underestimate I, I tell you, these lads are. Well, well, let's not forget, we're going to come on to the BT card later in the zone card, but Maxi Hughes started off on the small old show. Yeah, yeah. So it, I, I saw a tweet, actually, in the week. Uh, Cole, Cole Greaves was putting a tweet out about, about what's going on at the minute for him, and, and Maxi Hughes replied to him saying that Carl Greaves was, was the promoter that put his first show, his first fight on. So it just goes to show you. Yeah. Just goes to show you where these fighters start off. And I'm telling you now, um, and you can hold me to this, people can watch this back in a year's time. There, there, are, there are fighters that are going to be on this card on Saturday night in, in Leicester that are going to be big, big, big stars. I have no doubt about it. So anyway, I'll, back to, I'll, back to I'll name one for you just, just until you kick Tom Cowling. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't think Tom Tom's fighting sat there, but you're right. Tom Carlin's at a out of the Carl Grease stable and he's outstanding. And then another one for you, Stanley Stanard, who is fighting. Carlin's on the poster. Okay. Hey, neither here or there. Carlin's definitely one to watch. So is Stanard. Stanley but Stanard is is different. Greaves admits he's got a great stable at the minute, doesn't he? He expects a lot of him to do a lot of big things. Yeah, he's, he's not only got a he's not only got a great stable. The uh, the real talent of boys. Uh, and they're all around a similar weight. So he's going to have a bit of an headache because they're all lining up. They're all lining up to, to want title shots. Um, it's going to be very interesting, this this um, Kyle Awood, Ryan Amos fight. I have a feeling if if Kyle Awood wins this fight, I think he might move on to the to the to uh, either an English title or, or, um, or just big things in general. Um, if, if he does, that opens the way for the likes of Stanley Stanard. And he, I'm telling you now, Stanley Stanard is ready for, for, for this Midlands, Midlands title. Um, so, who, who are you backing in that fight, then? You know what, mate? I don't know. I, 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 and you know me, I don't sit on the fence. This is a seriously close fight. Um, and, and they're very evenly matched as well. Kylie Woods, 10-1. Uh, and one. Um, Ryan Amos is 9-0. and oh. Uh, this is this is going to be an umdinger, mate. It's going to be one of them where I expect it to go to points. I think it's a ten round fight. I expect it to go to points, and it's going to be really close. Someone else who deserves a quick mention as well is Liam Walsh. Oh yeah. wow, yeah, he's going to be. Some I mean, Liam's up. Liam's obviously an Irish lad. Um, trained, he trains in Ireland. He's managed and promoted by Carl Greaves. Uh, so Carl gets him over on the shows in the UK, as well as him fighting in Ireland. He's currently sat at three and out as a fight, as a pro fighter. But uh, but what a talent, mate! We saw him, didn't we, in Newark? Walter. Oh wow! Um, he's 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 another one. He's another one going places. Um, it was one of them occasions, Andy, where you just stand there and watch him in awe, don't you? Just that yeah, good yeah. he was. Yeah, real, and and that was. I mean, that was only his second fight, I believe. Second fight, yeah. Absolute, absolute talent. Um, so let's just quickly go for a couple of the names that, I mean, of, the way things work on these small old shows is you sometimes get pullouts quite late on as well. It ends up being a nightmare for, and an headache for for promoters, for the likes of Cole Greaves and the likes of um, any of these small old promoters. I mean, you see them running around, scrambling to try and find, uh, uh, you know, replacements Mainly the fight, you know, the, the away fighter. Uh, Even Andy got his shorts on one one fight. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, so, so this is this is subject to change. I would say uh, I've pulled my my details off box track, and that and that you know for these small old shows, that's probably not the most accurate to go by. But there you go. Anyway, so we've just talked about him, Stanley Stannard. He's currently sat at eight and He's itching. For a, for a title shot, itching. I suspect his next fight will be a world a, a world title. His next fight will be a yeah, it, it, it like a world title fight. <laughs> his next fight will be a Midland area title fight. Um, because like I say, I think Kyle A would win, lose, or draw on on Saturday night. I think he might move on uh, to to bigger things. We'll see. If Ryan Amos wins, then you can almost guarantee. Stanley Stanard v Ryan Amos, I reckon. Uh, what a fight that'd be as well. Um, another name to look for, uh, Callum Blockley. Again, fantastic fighter, currently sat at 8-0. Um, there's so much talent, mate. It... Ellis Hopkins, 3-0, female fighter. Uh, she's in a six-rounder. This, Mate, I can go on and on and on. I believe there's 10 fights on this card. Yeah. I mean, what talk about value for money. Absolutely outstanding. So, um, I believe, well, I don't believe, I know for a fact that we're going, and uh, I can't wait to get in there. Um, there'll be footage dropping on the show. Interviews that we'll do post-fight and possibly even, even mm. pre-fight. Um They'll be dropping next week, I'm guessing, uh, once we've been out and done stuff. Uh, fantastic, mate. 
Fantastic. I can't wait for it. So, so it seems that you tried to push me on it. Who you got winning the car? Well, you never answered it, did you? Hey? You, didn't, you didn't answer it, did you? If you give an answer, then I'll give you no, I didn't, no, I didn't. I didn't. I'm 50 50, mate. That's how close I think it is. No, that's you, splinters. I'm thinking, um, I like Carl Haywood, but I think Ryan Amos is going to take this. I think it'll be a close points decision, even may even be split, but I just think Amos, I, yeah, I just fancy Amos to win it. I like giving answers, so I think Amos is going to win. Fair enough. We'll see, Saturday, won't we? Boxing's about opinions. No, you're right. You're right. It is, mate. It is. And then I see, like you said, the standard Amos fight afterwards, which will, you know, this one's yeah. going to be a war, but that one will be a war as well. Sally Stannard is chomping at the bit. Chomping at the bit. Uh, and he's ready to move as well. Um, <clears throat> just quite, just, it just just goes to show um, the depth and quality that Carl Gibbs has attracted to his gym currently. Yeah, and don't forget these guys are often doing full time jobs, selling tickets themselves. Yeah, you yeah. know, so yeah, the majority yeah. of them are doing it for the love of the sport and just open to get that break. So it yeah, deserves absolutely, it. mate. Um, um, I mean, Cole, Cole's got an eye for for spotting talent. Um, uh, he's got some fantastic, fantastic fighters in the stable right now. I'm just going to um, pick Joe's comment up to. I think he's a bit tongue in cheek. Joe says, "Good evening, Joe." Small old shows are vital to bring through top 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 talent like Campbell Atten. He's on it already. You've the show's only been going eleven minutes, mate. <laughs> You've already got the fishing rod out. Do you know? Do you know what? Do you know what? We, we've said it on this show, Joe. Um, we think Campbell Atten would have been much better suited to to start off in small alls. Where he's obviously still got the name, but the spotlight wouldn't have been on him. He probably would have learned his trade a bit better. Hi, Sean. How are you, Sean? Hello, boys. Right? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, the Scarlet Pimpernel's back, Carl. Yeah, we're just talking about small all. I'll ignore that comment, Sean. So, um, <laughs> we're just talking about small all, and Andy's actually inaccurate again because he seems to think we all said Rick Campbell Atten would have benefited from small all. So, no, I said I would. No, you said all of us. So, I can remember me and you agreeing that we, that wasn't the case for me and you, was it? We agreed that he, he, he can still get that level of opponent, but be on a on earlier on big cards. Yeah, and and I think that's crucial for a fight group of fighters. I don't think they should be pushed too soon. And I think I, I think there's countless examples. Um, is where you've seen that and um, Frank Warren recently. I don't know if you've seen boxing news yeah, with them about them and and, and I. Think it's crucial for boxing that, that you do have these smaller hall fighters as else you, you wouldn't really get much for boxing I don't think really in general coming on to your comment inside to, to we says at a small hall show was where I first saw Canelo dude was still a teenager then KO'd his opponent with a body shot so hard the dude screamed I bet that was some night I bet and you, and, and he wouldn't have thought Canelo was going that places uh, at them early days, I'm sure. Then again, he started fighting at 15, so you know he's always going to land on yeah. a small old show at 15 one day in Mexico. You know, I'm surprised it was even regulated. It probably wasn't. Probably wasn't. But the, all these shows, all these shows over here are uh, the real quality, real, real, real top draw. So um, again, before we move on. If you haven't, um, or you're not doing anything on Saturday night, and you're sick and tired of watching undercards that fall a bit short, let's say, and you want to watch a packed card of real quality fights, a lot of them 50-50, then get yourself down to this show. Uh, Morningside Arena, I believe there's still some tickets available. You can get them from Cole, Cole Greaves himself. You can get them from the fighters. Uh, just go on to the socials. I'm sure you know they'll 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 send them out to you if you want some. And probably the, you can probably get them from the Morningside Arena as well. Yeah, you can, you can get them online from the Morningside Arena. Okay, moving on to the next topic then. So we're going to move on to the zone card this Saturday, Nottingham Arena. 
Um, Andy, take it away. Well, this was meant to be a big night for Leewood, and obviously that's not happening now because of Leewood's injury. So, uh, our Barry has moved up. He's took the mantle and he's now redlining the show. Um, first and foremost, before we go down the, the card, Do you think this? Do you think this is even going to be? Is even going to be our full call? No. So I'm having it on very good authority uh, because anyone don't know me and Andy are from Nottingham. I'm having it on very good authority uh, that there's that, that there was nine thousand tickets sold at a point Lee Wood was still fighting, and that's now gone down to three and a half thousand. Is what I'm hearing. So obviously, when when Lee Wood pulled out, these these headliners would have been given more tickets. So, um, you know, the likes of Kid Galahad, Maxi Hughes, Anna Rankin, and Terry Harper would have all been given a, a, another bunch of tickets that Lee Wood fight, uh, fight fans have have claimed refunds on. Um, and you can't blame them for doing that. You know, no. the, the, the whole point of them being there is to is to support Lee Wood. Uh, it's a shame. It, it really is. Um, I can understand why Matchroom didn't want to pull the show because you've got you've got two world title fights. It's unfair on the fighters. Um, it it was looking like a really strong card, and I was going to come on this show today and say I think it I think it tops the BT pay per view card, but I can't say that anymore um, because past the two world title fights. And and it's just young pros coming through again. Uh, you know, you've got the likes of Chef Clark, Solomon Dakers, and Cyrus Patterson on the on the undercard. You know, all all got less than five pro fights. Flying the trade, you know, they've got to learn that way, but but it doesn't make for a for a massive card for you know for fans that have paid some really top dollar. Um it, it, you know, it kind of falls a little bit short, I think. So we'll skip, Carl, we'll skip those those earlier fights. Yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, no. Actually, no. Saying that, I wouldn't mind talking about the Solomon Dakers fight because he's, he's fighting uh, yeah. another English fighter. Dom, Dominic Accolade. Um, who's currently, currently sat at 9-3 and... One with four knockouts, um, and he's been in with some some decent fighters. He's been in with uh, Nathan Gorman. Um, he lost on points to Nathan Gorman, and he's been in with Martin Bacola. And Martin stopped him in the first round, but <clears throat> he clearly has more experience than Solomon. So it's going to be interesting how Solomon negates this fight. How do, how do you see it going, Carl? Yeah, I quite like Solomon Dakras. Um, obviously, he had, a, he had a esteemed amateur career. So, I really do think they can move him quickly. Um, Accolade has been beat every time he stepped up to a certain level. So, what we are going to find out on Saturday is how good so Solomon is. Or what level he's currently at. Yeah. Because the one thing I do like about him um, is he's got a good engine on him. And he keeps himself in good shape, Solomon Dakras. So, I, I expect this to go late. I think Solomon will stop him. I think he's slightly avoided Solomon Dacus for me. I think they're struggling to matchmake him um, because he's that, I think he could be that good. I think I think he, he could really get... I think he could go to the top end of that division, to be honest with you, um, with a bit more experience. But, yeah, I expect Solomon to stop him late under. How do you see, Sean? Yeah, I agree with Carl, I think, and... And I guess he has a career so far, hasn't he? It's a bit stop and start. I guess with yeah. him, what, what they're probably looking for is Jimmy Fisher, I, I would imagine, because level. And and I think, you know, they talk about um, that they want more. I guess that's the natural fight for them to make, make I don't know, in six. That's what you'd, you'd, you'd like to see happen. I don't see that happening, mate. Um... I can't see Eddie wanting to have one of those two fighters with a loss on the record so early on. 
I'll, I'll be honest. I, and also, Fisher shifts a lot of tickets. Yeah, uh, I mean, this is the problem when you've got a couple of fighters, three or four fighters in the same division or one division apart. Um, you can't get the same push for for all of them. Unfortunately, that's just the way it works. Uh, and, and clearly, because Johnny Fisher does shift a serious amount of tickets, he's getting the focus at the minute. Um, and, and, and maybe, you know, maybe quite rightly because of the ticket sales. You know who Solomon reminds me of in terms of his tra trajectory? There's a word for Thursday night. Martin Bacola, where he just can't... Is he a ticket seller? We all know he's a very good fighter. But he's already, in my view, he's already in the Who Needs Him club where nobody really wants to jump in with him. Yeah, it's like he's treading water, isn't it? Yeah. That being, and, and that's not a disrespect to Solomon at all. You know, it's like he's treading water and can't get any motion. Uh, yeah, time's going to tell, mate. If he pulls off a, a really good performance, you know, maybe this is the card that's going to springboard his, um, his career. We'll see. Okay, so so moving on, we'll move on to to the headliners. Um, Hannah Rankin, Terry Harper. This is drawing a lot of uh, di different views. It's quite split this fight. I know me and Carl think different on it, so I'll come to you first, Sean. Um, obviously, Hannah Rankin. This is a this is a a usual weight. She's been at this weight for a while now. Uh, Terry Harper's moved up, moving up to this. I think she's going up three weights to take this fight. Uh, how do you see the fight going? Uh, Harper will win. I think she went on points. But um, to a certain extent, with the men, we've seen that with Natasha Jonas go up to that weight as well. I do think to a certain degree, uh, you can't really look into the weights too much in the female in, in the female will probably be the better fight out of the two main events if I'm being honest because um I I don't think Gallon oh I think that'd be a bit boring but in, in terms of this, yeah I think Terry Hart will win on points Carlin the winner of this fight is likely to get a unification against Natasha Jonas. If you was to look at it from Natasha Jonas's point of view, who do you think is the easiest fight to make? Well, well, I might change my mind after Saturday. I can only speak as I sit here now on past performances. I'd want up every day of the week. I'm sure and Natasha Jonas wants that fight as well to right that wrong. But I mean, regards the promotions, and you know, there's been it's been no secret that that uh, Joe Gallagher has a bit of a, a running issue with Eddie Earn and a matchroom regarding making fights. Natasha Jonas should have had loads of fights, and she never got them. Yeah. Um, Terry Harper's obviously in the matchroom. Does that make that fight very difficult to make? No, I don't think so. It's not like it's not like. Um... It's, it's not like Joe Gallagher stopped performing on his own recently, is it? As long as the money's right, I think it. I think there's not a problem. Um, regarding this fight, I just think Rankin's too big for her. I know you're going to try and convince me there's a similar weight and size, but I don't think that'll be a case on fight night. I just think she'll be too big, too strong. She'll keep her at the end on the end of a jab. I'm assuming if I was Rankin. Um, and I think Rankin would just have a little bit too much for Terry Harper. A little bit too much. I don't think she's as good a boxer as people would try and make out. And she definitely ain't going to outfight Rankin. So, um, yeah, I just see. I think Anna Rankin, I think she stops her. I think she stops her around, around oh. eight as well. Yeah. That's a, that's a big call, that is, mate. Just too much for her, I think. I hear what you're saying about the fact that Anna Rankin's used to the weight. She's grown into it. If you look at, mm -hmm. if you do look at size, because um, yeah, I am going to bring that up. There was a photo re recently put out where they'd done sparring not like long ago, and um, 
and they are about the same height. It for me, this all depends on on how well Terry Harper carries that extra weight. Can she do? Can she do ten rounds at that weight? Is the question. Because I do, I do expect that it's going to go the distance. Um, the other way to look at it is, every time Anna Rankin's stepped up against real top quality, she's lost. Yeah, I don't consider Arpa to be top quality though. Oh, I think she is, mate. I think she is. No, she pushed, not not at that weight anyway. She pushed Jonas. She she pushed Jonas right to the end. Not she? at that weight, she didn't though. And another thing I don't really understand is. She said in the press conference that it was killing her to get down to that original fight weight. Well, why would you stay there then? I know she had a world title eventually, but you know, if it's if it if it's affecting your performances, I just think she's gone up too many weights, is my honest. A lot answer. of fighters do that though. To be fair, a lot of fighters do that. They stay at the weight longer than they should. Natasha Natasha Jones admitted she went up them weights because it was an opportunity for a world title, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And also, I don't think um, Terry Harper is as good a fighter as Natasha Jonas. I think Natasha Jonas beats both of these, whoever she gets hold of. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And I just don't think Harper's good enough to be. I'm not saying Rankin's a world beater. I know, I know, but I just think she'll have a little bit too much for um, for Terry Harper. And I'll suggest that Harper won't stay this high up in weight after the fight. Okay. Again, it's all about opinions. Um, but I'm going with Sean on this one. I think Terry Harper wins a, a points mm-hmm. decision. I think uh, I, I liked her when she moved up to to lightweight. I thought um, the you know at the last Lee Wood fight in Nottingham, um, uh, Lee Wood Conlon, she was on the undercard and I thought she looked very strong. So moving up again, um, she may be just as strong, or she may not. We'll, we'll certainly find out. But but if if she's carrying that weight, okay. I think she wins this fight because I think I think she's she's got more quality. Okay, moving on to Cole's best mate, Kid Galahad, um, versus Maxi Hughes for the IBO uh, World Lightweight Title. I believe. I believe. Um, Maxi Hughes is, is, is he's got like a second coming, hasn't he? He's, he's done fantastic recently. Um, I'll come to you, Sean. You've already said you think it's going to be a bit of a boring fight. Do you think it's going to be a boring fight because of Kid, Kid Galahad's style? Yeah, to be honest, I think it nearly- bore me when I watch I use the Ingle style to his advantage, but whereas with it, I don't I think he, Dom Ingle's a good trainer, don't get me wrong, but I think Galahad, I just think he bores the life out of nearly everyone. And I think because they're, they're both basically identical fighters, I think, you know, it's going to be one of the more boring fights of the year. Yeah. Carl, just before I get your opinion, uh, do you want to pick that comment up from, the comments up from um, Joe in the sidebar? Yeah, so Joe said, ranking should be stopping Harper. I see a lot of the jab and grab from Harper. And he goes on to say regarding Arthur saying it killed to get down to a fight weight. They all say that when they move up, which is they do. Right. Yeah, I, th- I think it was it was quite obvious though, um against Boom Gardner that Arthur was was nowhere. She, she, she and, and I mean they did not come out and said she was poorly. Um but but she wasn't right going into that fight. You you could just see it on her face. Um uh, yeah, I think she really struggled, if I'm honest, uh, right at the end of that. Uh, she'd come off an injury, hadn't she? Was it an hand injury or, or something? Wrist injury. Um, so she'd had a bit of a layoff. So maybe it did kill her that last that last time to make that weight. Um, anyway, back to Kid Galahad, Max Hughes. Uh, Joe, give us your prediction for this, mate. Uh, while, while you're doing that, I'll get Cole's opinion. Yeah, so... Um... I've never heard so many excuses like I did in the press conference today from Kid Gallard about his loss to Martinez. Yeah. You know, um, the truth was that he just got 
it with a right hand. And let's be honest, if Martinez can take you out at 54, then I'm not sure you know, if, if, if Max Hughes connects with him. I've not, I've not liked Galahad's demeanour all the way through this. He's almost belittling Max Hughes because he's come up the hard way, which I don't like. Um, Dom Ingle was very respectful. I really hope Max Hughes beats him. I really hope he outworks him, and uh, you know, but Max Hughes is trying to get in his head a little bit by saying, I know you're going to come using dark arts, you're going to tread on my toes, you're going to do this, that and the other. So I think, I think Max Hughes will take it on points. That's what, that's what, that's where I am. I think, I think there's nothing left with our barrier. I think his put I think his punch resistance has gone. And I think he's on the slide. So um I think Max Hughes could well be getting him at a good time. Um that's it for me. Uh, do you want to get that comment from, from Joe about our Barry and Cyborg? So Joe says Galad is going to be even more cautious after the KO. Galad by a wide point decision mind. Numbing, boring decision. Unfortunately, I'd like to see Max Hughes win this as well. Unfortunately, I don't think he's going to because because uh, of exactly what Joe's just said and 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 what Sean said. Um, Kid Galhad's going to bore him, put him to sleep, get him out of his rhythm, and he will. Like Max Hughes has said, he will use dark arts. He does it very, very, very well. Um, he's been doing it all of his career and and. And it's how he's got decisions he's got. Uh, it's, a long, it's a long way back for whoever loses, though. A long way back. I don't think... Yeah, I, I, I hear you. For, I, for Galahad, it definitely is. Um, losing losing 200 bounces is, is not a good look. Max Hughes, however, I think, I, I think he'll, he'll just roll on, mate. I'd like say he... Max Hughes is, is focused because obviously he had his head turned a little bit with the Ryan Garcia flirtation that had going yeah. on. And all I would say is that different mindset into it jumping in with Ryan Garcia over in the States for a payday, let's say, than jumping in with a South Yorkshire Derby with uh, Arbera. So, especially when he knows the way the way Kid Galahad fights, it, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. Um, and I, I, you know, I want to touch on what you were saying as well about the belittling of, of, of the way Max Hughes come into boxing, and there's just no need for it, mate. I, I just, I don't like, I don't like the attitude that Galahad puts across. Uh, it doesn't. It's not a good look. It's not a good look. Uh, so yeah, I want Max Hughes to win, but unfortunately, I think Galahad's gonna. Use all the tricks in the book and come up with a with a boring points decision win. Um, yeah, let's move on quickly. Okay, so moving on to the other card that's happening on Saturday, which is a BT Sports card in Manchester. So over to you, Andrew, to start taking us through the card. Okay, um, I'm not going to go through the whole of the undercard. No. I think we'll start with um, what looks like a, a cracking fight for the IBO interim middleweight title. Um, Nathan Heaner uh, from Stoke against Jack Flatley from Bolton. Uh, mm. So it's kind of a home fight, really, for Flatley. Um, he's <clears> likely <throat> to have a big crowd there. But then again, Nathan Heaney is a right ticket seller. Um so Nathan Heaney sat at 15 and 06 KOs. Jack Flatley is 19, 2 and 1 with 4. I like Nathan Heaney. I do. I like his attitude. Um, I like the impact his fans have. It's all really buoyant and, 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 and exciting. I think it's really, really good for boxing. Um, I'm quite surprised he's as low on the card as he is. But then again, you look at who's above him, uh, and I guess that's 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 kind of where it is, is at the minute. This the is a ten round fight, say, and the only thing I would say that he obviously had that sabbatical from boxing, where he got a bit disillusioned and returned. He is now thirty three, so he does need to hurry up a little bit. I hear you, 
but because he did have that timeout, he's not he's not a worn thirty three. Mm. He's not a worn thirty three. I think um, I think he's got plenty in the tank, mate. I think he's got plenty in the tank. He's got a good few years left in him. He's not looking worn, is he? He's not looking tired. Uh, I, I expect this to be a real umdinger of a fight. Um, will it? Will it? Steel fight of the night. There's a good chance, uh, and also the next fight that we're going to come up, up to will uh, will be a fight of the night as well. Um, so, quick prediction, Carl. Nathan and Jack Flatley. I think he's in for an hard night's work here. You know, um, I like Flatley. He's going to come to win as well. Because um, I like this is getting towards last chance saloon for Flatley if he wants to go any higher. But I think. Amy will just have a bit too much. So I'm going Amy to stop him round 10. Sean? I think Haney will win on points. I'm going to go points for, for Amy as well. I'm just um, going to put in comments up in the side. So it looks like Shakir Stevenson's coming on the uh, 1.6 pounds overweight. And he's got two hours to make weight or he'll be stripped. That's absolutely horrendous. That's horrendous. If that's the case, how unprofessional is that? And he's been giving it a large ante during the press conference and that as well. So not only not only him though, Carl. That's, that, that's, that's, that's giving it by large. the way, Andy. That's from that's from our American correspondent to Wees, by the way. <laughs> yeah, thanks for that. Thanks for that, mate. Um, The whole of America has been giving it large. He's, he's the next massive fighter. He's the next pound for pound king. And then he does that. That's just awful. It's an awful I do fight. like him as a fighter. It, you what? I do like him as a fighter, though. I think he's absolutely next level. Yeah. Yeah, he is. He is. But what's going on in camp if he's coming in yeah. 1.6 pound of a weight? He'll, he'll get that off. Don't get me wrong. He'll lose it. But... He shouldn't need to. He should be more professional than that. Unfortunately, yep. the, there's a lot of this with these fighters in the States. Um, they get massive money, mate, and and the hunger goes. I've never really understood it, though, because, you know, they check weight all the way through camp. They've got strength and conditioning coaches now as well. You no know, so it, it beggars belief. There's no excuse. <clears throat> Joe's saying... Um, uh, any on points? Yeah, all you like on the yeah, you're all clubbing together, aren't you? Frightened to give a real decision, so let's just move on. You know, there's only one person giving a proper decision here. I didn't think Joe was like that. Of, of course, it's not a proper decision because we don't agree yeah, with you. You're all I be. I think it'd be points. One of you says it, and the other one says it, and the other one says it. It's only me, mate. Me and Tweez making any decisions on this show. Oh, behave. That many splinters. Okay, moving on. Um, Nottingham's very own Echo Eshiman against Samuel Antwi. Again, great fight this. Um, this is for the British uh, welterweight title. Um, I'll come to you first, Sean. What, I think, uh, what do you think of... You... Sorry, mate. Yeah. I I would say with a bit of a point in fight for who, who he could have fought. British world's way out out there. I just think it's disappointing, really. But you know, that's where we are. I think Echo wins, but I'm not really sure and and how far he can go. But I think he, he defends his belt this weekend. I'm actually amazed that that um, that Connor Ben negated doing the tradition going the traditional route. I'm not. He would have. He, he would have learned so much more by going in against the likes of Echo Eshiman earlier on in his career. Instead, he's he's fought all these fighters in you know European fighters that aren't aren't anywhere near Eshiman's level, um, and now he's in the sticky position of of having to to go up weights to to make a fight. Uh, makes no sense to me. <clears throat> Carl, um, how do you see the fight going? Yeah, I think Esmond will, will beat 
this guy on points. I think he'll go the distance. As something's not known as a big puncher. Um, he like he, he's slick, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but I'm just amazed that Esmond has, hasn't had bigger fights holding a British belt, British title. Where mm. where the days gone? Where the Lonsdale belt was something that people aspired to, you know, defend three times and own, own a version. Yeah, I'm a bit perplexed because um, he, he seems to be struggling to get a big fight, doesn't he? You know. You know. You know. Half the problem is when. Um these big promoters are, are pulling these fighters through that they want to take places, fighters they think are going to go places. They're scared to put them in against British level because they know how tough it is. <laughs> they, know how, they know how tough it is. You know it, Joe. Joe, I'll, I'll say it again. So when it's repeated tomorrow, get off the fence. <laughs> when you start agreeing with Andy on predictions and giving long-winded answers, you're in trouble, fella. It's not you. It's not you. Go on, Andy. So um, I'm just reading reading uh, Joe's Joe's comment. Uh, proper scrap. Uh, this one echo, uh, echo late late ko. Um, I think it's going to be a really close fight. Actually, I do. Um, I'm going to go echo points, but I think it's going to be really close. I think Anthony's a better fighter. We give them, we're giving him credit for. Sean, did you give a prediction, mate? Can't remember. <laughs> we can't all be wrong, Carl, can we? Hey. Moving on to the next fight. Moving on to the next fight. Possibly the best female fighter of all time, Amanda Serrano. What this woman has done, moving up and down weights, becoming multiple world champions at different weights, is outstanding. And performing as well when she's doing it to the highest level. She needs much more credit than she's actually been given over the years. Uh, we're very lucky to have her on this card. Uh, so she's defending the IBF, WBC, WBA, and IBO featherweight titles uh, in a in a in a ten round fight against Sarah um, Mafood. Yeah. Um, there's only one way this fight's going. Serrano looks looks razor sharp. Uh, she looks razor sharp. Um, when I've seen her in some some footage from camp, she looked razor sharp when she was on the open work day. She looks she's just outstanding, mate. Um, the, the fight with Katie Taylor recently was brilliant. I really yeah. wish we'd have got that second one straight away. Um, Carl, what what do you think of Amanda Serrano? Yeah, she's on she's on par with Katie Taylor and she's a trailblazer. Let's be honest with you. You know what she's done for female boxing, second to none. Um, she gives a big shout out to your mate Jake Paul, though. You know, she often gives him um, props for the promotional job that he's done with her. So you'll be glad to hear that. But yeah, yeah I think Amanda Serrano will obviously she, she, she'll win this fight, come to Blair. Uh, she, it'll be a stoppage round five. Um, and then it'll be all about getting Katie Taylor back out with Serrano after Katie Taylor's next fight, I'd imagine. Like, you're probably looking at next summer. At Croke Park, I'd I'd probably suggest. Before we move on, and before I get Sean uh, Sean's uh, thoughts on Amanda Serrano, sure? we've got to pick this comment up in the sidebar. Uh, so, to ease it, as um, put in the sidebar a, a tweet from allegedly, Facebook. allegedly, you have to be careful with our American correspondent. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm having it. I'm having it to ease. I'm, I'm having it. It, I, I, I believe you. So he's putting the side comment. This is a this is a, a, a tweet from Shakur Stevenson. Um, I get on, my before you start, just before you start, this is a view of Ander you can find on Twitter and not a view of the channel. There you go, Ander. <laughs> Off you go. <laughs> uh, I gave it my all. I've been professional my whole career and made weight, but my body just cannot make 130 anymore. My health has to come first. 
I'm moving to 135 in my next fight. Firstly, why are you fighting at 130 if your body can't fight that, make that weight anymore, mate? Answers on a postcard. Where is something that is, is realised in this camp? I don't know. Oh, no. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not wearing that, mate. I'm not wearing that. I don't know. I'm not wearing it. We, we've just said, haven't we? When fighters, when fighters uh, want to move up, what's the first thing they say? Can't make the weight no more. Yeah. He'd have known. Come on, come on. He'd have known in his last fight if he'd been struggling to make that weight. It wasn't that long ago. It's just unprofessional. Simple as. Call it, call it, call it as it is. It's unprofessional. I mean, I mean, it's it's twenty five. You know, it's twenty five. So he's not, he's not exactly in the twilight of his career, is it? No, exactly. If you can't make this weight no more, relinquish your belt and move up. Don't don't show yourself up standing on, on, on a scale and not making the weight and then coming out and saying you, your body can't make the weight no more. Come on. Come on. I mean, it was only, oh. April. It was only April when he last fought. So, this is you know, what I'm, saying, what what I'm saying to you. So you can't tell me that he wouldn't have known in that camp he was struggling to make that weight. It's not that long ago. All of a sudden, it's, it's a massive struggle. Sean, what's your reaction to the... Oh, um, live reaction, Sean. It's like being on Sky Sports What's news. your reaction to that tweet, Sean? I have to, I have to make that, that bar at the bottom yellow, Sean. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, um, I don't know if you saw the out of, of him uh, making weight the other day when he had literally yeah. a late coming out of his suit. So yeah. I I don't believe it can't be done if you want to do it. He's, he's WPO, isn't he? Probably... Well, well, the cynical person in me probably thinks that he's done this, so he'll he'll get elevated to um, fight in the next fight for the um, one three. Do you want to pick the comments up, Carl? Yeah, so our American correspondent tweets again a bit deep now. So he's saying, "Plain devil's advocate, better to ask for forgiveness than for permission." So. And Joe says, I agree. So that, that's from our British correspondent. <laughs> so, so, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, get, I get your point too easy. I get your point, but it's unprofessional. Okay. Um, so back to Amanda Serrano, uh, Sean. You know, when, it, when, when, when she's done and dusted, when her career is over, um, where do you think she sits in the all time women's greats? I think just below Katie Taylor. What a naughty question. Sean, what, Sean, what a naughty question to ask you that is, isn't it? Why? Naughty. Why is it? She's not got, she's not got long left. Right. She's, she's had a full career. He's stitching you up like a good one, Sean. Good luck with this quick answer. I've already, mate, I've already said, I think she's, I think she's up there, pound for pound, as the, as one of the best women fighters of all time. Yeah, well, next week, Sean, we'll send you an email with a question we're going to ask you. Is that all right? Sean, ignore him. Go on, mate. Give me your answer. Yeah, I, I Taylor will always be the best female fighter purely because what she's done as an amateur and she basically transformed boxing for a whole country what she's done. And I think Amanda, um, obviously, she's got the pull to... And I think, you know, just to think too people like uh Chris Shields, McKay and Mayor have half the career that they're gonna have for me. It's certainly this it's certainly the the coming the coming to the end of the career is right when female uh fighting's taking off to a, a completely different atmosphere didn't level of it's never been at this level has it there's been great fighters down the years um female fighters down the years but it's never been where it's at right now uh, yeah. and you're right well, sure just... that those two fighters are, are head and shoulders 
Just to pick else. up to we, our American correspondence question regarding is she better than Christy Martin? What I would say, Christy Martin fought in the late 60s and early 70s, so it's a complete different landscape. Yeah. And I'd probably argue the answer is yes, if you look at Christy Martin's record in an era where I'd argue female boxing's come a long way since that era. So um, I still think Katie Taylor and Amanda Serrano would pick Christy Martin, yeah. Very good debate, that, though. Um, OK. Well, then, what about Jane Couch? Again? Again, unfortunately for Jane, she's she was in that era once she were... It was being frowned upon. <clears throat> and, and in some quarters, some quarters even laughed at at the time. Yeah, yeah. You know, she she blazed her own trail. Didn't want bothered about what other people were thinking. Um. She needs a lot of credit because a lot of these women that are fighting now look to Jane Couch, don't they, as inspiration. So you you probably wouldn't get the talent you've got now if it wasn't for the likes of Jane. So she needs to be right up there. Absolutely, mate. And and Wolf's a good shot as well. Yep. It, it's just very difficult to compare these two areas. Yeah. Which I just think female boxing's come a long way since. So. But yeah, they all deserve mentioning when you when you talk about trailblazers. I agree. Next okay. fight, and then... okay, yeah, moving on. Um, uh, next fight, and and these are in no particular order. I don't know how they're going to sit on the card. I, I would suspect Amanda Serrano is probably going to be right up there. Uh, Chief support. A... Chief support. Yeah, uh, you would think so, wouldn't you? Um, they, they won't, they're not going to bring her all the way over here and not put her eye up on the card. Um, so the next fight is for the IBO World Featherweight title. Uh, Michael Magnesi from Italy is going in against uh, Anthony Kakis. Is that how, how his name's pronounced? Close enough, isn't it? Um, this again... Looks like it might be quite a, a, cl a close fight. Um, you never know with with um, some some records might look a bit padded, but Michael McNess is twenty and oh, uh, sorry twenty one and oh. Uh, Kakis is nineteen one and one. He's been in with some decent fighters though. He's been in with some real good fighters. Um, he beat Sam Bowen for for example. Um, who was a great uh, British level fighter, Sam Bowen. Really, really good. Uh, he lost to Martin J. Ward. And he uh, and he beat uh, Leon Woodstock. So he's been in with some real talent. He's been with some real good, um, good British level opponents. He's going to have a decent uh, following from Belfast, I'm quite sure. How do you see this one going, Carl? I honestly don't know, is my answer. And I don't often say that. I do not know enough about this Magnesia. I've not, you know, yeah, I have watched my I have watched match room cards in Italy, but he doesn't ring a bell with me. Very similar records. I mean Martin J. Ward, it's a bad loss, that is, if you're looking to get anywhere near world level, isn't it? Let's be honest. Um so just purely for the fact that I don't know much about Magnassi, I'll, I'll plump for Anthony to win. Um, I don't want to stereotype or generalise, but Italian fighters don't often travel well. So I'll go for Anthony to win, and, I, and I'll go for him to win. Stop him round eight. So Joe, in the sidebar, has put, I can't spell it, but I'll say AC, KO, I rate him. Sure. I think Anthony could catch you. I think his name is. Oh. Am I right in thinking that he was the guy that was on the uh, Fury White card and he got pulled up the last minute? Uh, wasn't Don't it? Don't know, mate. Did you pizza or, or something? Yeah, I, I, I think I'm right in saying that. But from what I've seen, he's, he's impressive. And I think, you know, he's another one, sort of these fights, is where. He needs a real breakout fight, so people. Yeah. 
and and I think you know, hopefully he wins them. I think he's got a good career ahead of him. Great stuff, great stuff. Uh, Joe's agreeing in the sidebar. Okay, and moving on to the headliner then. Uh, Joe Joyce, Joe Parker. This is a fantastic fight. Um, I've been crying out in previous um, shows, going back a bit. I've been crying out for Joe Joyce to be properly tested, uh, and this is the fight he's going to get tested. This is the one, mate, where you find out just how good Joe Joyce is. So, that being said, Carl, how do you see the fight going? I'll stick to what I've always said. I've said for a long time. I think Joe Park will come out very quick. I think Joe Park will be up on points significantly. But I think Joe Joyce will grind him down by keep coming forward. And he'll stop Parker. No, he won't. He'll go to points. I think Park will, uh, Joe Joyce will nick it on points. So, so Joyce is going to have to do a lot in the last... Last he half is. Of the fight, then. I think it'll be a fight of two halves. Sean? Yeah, I actually think Joe Joyce stops him. Um, people sort of overrated him. <clears throat> For me, since he lost to AJ and sort of the same fighter, I, I know under Andy Lee he styled out. But I think over the overall, I rate Joe Parker too highly. I beat him, and, and and I know you know a lot of people think that about Dylan. Watt, but I I think this will be the fight, or it should be the fight, where people credit or being a elite heavyweight. Yeah, for me, this is this is. I know sounds stupid when you when you look at Joe Joyce's age, but he spent so long in the amateurs. He's played a bit of catch up in in the, in the pro game, uh, but his style, uh, he can go on till he's. 40 45 if he wants to um it's definitely the breakout fight it's definitely the fight oh i mean with this fight i mean it's it's for the the, the number one spot in the wbo mandatory spot for, for for the world title so the winner of this gets a massive shot you might have to wait a little bit but they'll get the shot eventually you know if you just look though at um the resumes joe parker's been in with much higher quality opponents is that going to play a part later on in the fight i mean i how often's joe joyce gone to points how often he's on 12. we all say he's got a great engine we all say he's is he'll, he'll come forward all night long and he can take loads and loads of punishment but do we really know do we really know in the in the championship rounds Personally, I think I think he will. I think he'll. I think he'll. He'll last. Uh, I, I saw a. I listened to a, an interview um, on Talk Sport. Was it yesterday morning or today? No, it was today. Um, and Andy Lee was on uh, giving his predictions, and he was very respectful to Joe Joyce. Uh, and obviously, he's not going to give the the Parker game plan away totally. But he um, is is that. He, He's actually said we, you know, we think Joe Joyce is way, way, way too easily to win, and we've been working on Joe Joe Parker's power. So <clears throat> I think, but my personal opinion is, that I think they're looking for a knockout. I think they actually think they can stop Joe Joyce, which is a massive shirt. I, I actually, but I agree with uh, I agree with you, Sean. I think. I think Joe Parker's resume makes him look a better fighter than he is. Some of them wins he's got. Yui Fiore. Um, Andy Ruiz. He lost them fights, in my opinion. I think it, I think Joe Parker switched off in fights. Yeah, he does. Uh, that's another thing, actually, Carl. You, you know now you brought that up. Uh, that's another thing that... Um, They've been working on apparently in uh, in 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 camp and getting his mindset in the right place to to stop him doing that because his fights all of his fights that I mean he's not been stopped uh, for one all of his fights that that are going to points 
they're all very close when they shouldn't be. Because he has the talent. He clearly has the talent. Um, I just don't. I don't know if that he's too long in the tooth to to change what he's he's been doing for for such a long time. Who are we talking about, Joyce? No, Parker. Parker. Yeah, I, I, I don't. I, I just don't think he, he can get away from that mindset, Carl. If I'm honest, they, they reckon they've worked on his fitness. They reckon they've worked on his power. And everything's improving, but they're going to say that, aren't they? You know, I mean, against saying. far against far in New Zealand, he was dreadful, wasn't he? He's been. And dreadful you could for argue a while, that he lost. You, you could argue he lost that fight. I mean, everyone's going on about how well he's done against Chisora in that last fight. Chisora was done in that fight after three rounds, and and Park, Parker couldn't put him away. I mean, they're trying to draw. It did make me smile today when they're drawing a comparison between Delboy and Joyce in terms of him keep coming forward. I was like, have a day off. But the first three rounds, maybe. But then after that, Delboy's hanging on to the ropes. Yeah. Yeah, I think, um, I think Joe Joyce is. I was just going to say, mate, I, I, I think one of the problems with Joe Joyce is he just gets sort of stuck in second gear and he doesn't. In his rhythm, I think any decent heavyweight would have to be able to outbox Parker or or stop him because, as I say, he hasn't got any gears to him. I don't think. Yeah, so like, people, I, I agree with you. So, like Joe's comment inside about calling him Frankenstein, he's too slow. We keep hearing this, but nobody's worked him out yet, have they? Read, read the full, read the full uh, comment out, Carl. So, Parker on points, old Frankenstein is too slow. Don't underestimate the influence of being in camp with Fiori. Parker's movement and speed should be the difference. I don't see it. So, whether whether Joe Parker is going to reinvent himself, um, yeah, I just think Joe Joyce will <coughs> break him up. Um, interestingly, as well, they, they reckon they've been working on on, on the body in training. Um, I think they see that's a weak link in Joe Joyce's his arm. Everyone goes to the head. Quite clearly, he's got an head like iron because shots just bounce off him. I don't think Joe Parker is going to be able to take the pressure that Joe Joyce is going to put on him. I I, I, um, I actually think that, that Joe Joyce stops him very late on. Maybe round 11, something like that. I think he's gonna. He's, Joe Joyce will make Parker work for every minute of every round, and Parker's not used to that. So Joe says, not reinvented, just revitalised. That's why it's an intriguing fight. But yeah, I, just, yeah. I, I just don't think Parker's got the artillery to to stop Joyce coming forward. He'll have early success, um, but I just think he'll run out of steam. That's what's great about this show, though, Joe. It's all about opinions. Um, I can see where you're coming from. Uh, I, I'll be honest with you, mate. I've I haven't seen any real progression under Andy Lee. I really haven't. He's he's not he's not Tyson Fury Mark II. He doesn't have the movement of Fury. He doesn't have the ring craft and the IQ of Fury. And you can you can be in camp with you as much as you like, and I'm sure it gives him a boost. But he just isn't that level fighter. Yeah, what we'll do is if Parker wins, Andy will wear that stupid helmet thing that Joe Joyce come to the ring in. Do you remember? <laughs> <laughs> that was nuts. Right, final topic then. Now we've all disagreed well on that fight. So, Triple G versus Canelo. I think it all went the way we thought it was going to go. But, Sean, give us give your thoughts on the fight. I was quite disappointed with going. I think um, he should probably retire now, really. I don't see why he would stay at middleweight, really, because there's not... There's bank junior, of course. I, I just don't think there's any big fights now for... Say that he sort of uh, shows signs that he's weakening as well, but but for me, I just think he didn't get out here and he um, cruised to nine rounds to three win for me. 
He's talking Bivol into next already. You know, though. I don't think he should take that fight. Um, That's a mistake. I, I know he, he doesn't want to fight Benavidez. But I think that's probably the fight for him next to Super Middleweight. Had Benavidez done enough, Sean, to earn that Canelo shot? Who else is, Nicole? I... I'm just not sure he's at the front of the queue for me. Maybe that's why Canelo's considering going back up against Bivol again, because what what's he actually got at, at Super Middleweight? Who's he got? There's no big names there. I mean, by all accounts, sorry, Sean, for jumping in before you got to, uh, to, to answer your question. By all accounts, the pay-per-view uh, figures were shocking. 800,000 is what I'm being told. Oh, I've, I've, I've heard less than that. I've heard 500,000. Yeah, 800,000. Go on, Sean, sorry. I was just going to say, for Canelo, Benavitez is... Probably the big room. Of, of course, the fight I think makes sense if you guys go to light heavyweight. I don't know if you agree. The Cannon three match, I think, the fight from a light heavyweight. Other than that, I'm not, not really sure the big fights that are out there for him at the moment. Callum beats him at light ever. I agree. I agree. Callum beats him at light ever. Where would you take Canelo next, Lander? It's, it's tough, mate. Canelo's used to having these massive, gigantic paydays with millions of people watching him. I think those days have gone because I don't think there's any real tests for Canelo anymore at Super Middle. And I think Light Heavy, is, it's been proved now that Light Heavy, well, the Light Heavies are too big for him. Uh, uh, he can't even come down to middleweight because there's nobody there. The, yeah, the, the, super, you know, the two weight classes, there's, there's no one left. No, unfortunately, he's in, a, he's in an era where the super middleweight is absolutely shocking. Yeah. I think he'll go on a bit of a world tour. Mm. That's what I think he'll do. And pick people up like John Ryder in London and things like that. Because he'll still sell a stadium out, let's be honest. Of course he will. Of, of course he will. But he's not going to get the massive pay-per-view money that he's been getting, mate. And, and maybe that'll be enough for him to turn around and say... Enough's enough. You might get two or three more fights out of him, mate. That's not a bad shot from Joe, though. Um, he's going to have to go to the to PBC and bring Charlo up to one six eight. Now, now it's being mooted. Yeah, so that, um, that, that's a that's probably a big fight, I suppose. And Canelo can do that, can't he? He's on, he, uh, he's still not under contract with anyone, is he? Still a free, no. free agent, isn't he? Yeah, I he mean. Can do you talk about money, he can go over to Saudi Arabia and still earn the big money, can't he? Yeah, I mean, he could do that for one or two fights, go to, go to PVC for, you know, a fight and then a, and, and then a, a rematch clause. Um, why not? It's, that, that's, probably, that's probably as big as he's going to get. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't see a lot, of, a lot of places for Canelo to go. I really don't. I really don't. And then, you know, what do you do? Do you... Do you just carry on plodding on fighting fighters that you know you're going to beat? Because eventually, he's just going to drop his his quality to that level. You know, and the miles he, the miles on the clock will catch up with him eventually. Yeah, he, he's got nothing to prove now, mate. He, he's done it all. He's done it all. He's going to go down. He's going to go down in history as as one of the best. He's got to for what he's achieved. Um, yeah. And, and I'm just um, I'm just glad that we didn't see a beating for triple for triple G. Uh, he, you know he's got that last payday. He didn't he didn't do nearly enough in the fight, did he? Um, I mean, he's talking about carrying on into middleweight. Yeah, well, that's ridiculous. You know what? I mean, you've seen it. Or, <laughs> you've seen it already from Eubank Junior. Putting a tweet out there offering offering him a fight. Now he knows. You know, he's he's, he's sat and watched that fight and realised. Triple G's got absolutely nothing left. So I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll call him out now. I, 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 I didn't want it when he was a monster and in his prime. I gave it to gave it to Kel Brook. Um, but now I want it because he's easy pickings. Shocking. Yeah, just, just like he did with DeGale. He, yeah. he picked DeGale off, didn't he? So Tui says, Canelo needs to take a year off and let his body rest and heal. 
his last two fights, he looked worn towards the end. I don't think it's it is his age, but 60 plus fights in 33 years is a lot of miles. Benny Boxing, good evening, Benny Boxing. Definitely one of the best, but that fight was what it was. Triple G is a is a little too old. I'd have yeah. to agree. Yeah, I totally agree with you, mate. But yeah, I'm just glad um I'm just glad we didn't see a beating because that would have been horrendous for I mean we'd be talking about Canelo uh being one of the best. Surely Triple G has got to go down yeah. as one of the best middleweights of all time. Yeah, got to, I'd agree. With what he's done. Benny Boxing, Newbank loves to call out older fighters. I still think Triple G would beat him. I, I'm not convinced he will, mate. And nowadays, um I think I think Eubank's work rate will be too much. I, th I don't think tr Triple G can can live at that pace anymore. So Joe says, not sure about all-time great. Does he beat any of the four kings or some of the greats at 168? In my opinion, he doesn't. Again, Joe, uh, I'm a massive fan of the four kings, massive fan of Marvin Agler. I, I think Marvin Agler is the best middleweight of all time. A lot of people disagree with that. But um, I think he's right up there, mate. I think Triple G at his absolute best would have lived with him. Would he have beat him? Maybe not, but he would have lived with him. Um, well, I still stand by what I said. Triple G wouldn't have been big enough to beat Carl Froch at 168. No. No, no, no. No, I agree. I agree. He's not a one six eight fighter, mate. So, quick round robin the comments. Any other topics you want us to cover before we come off air, guys? Sean, anything you want to cover? I wait in the sidebar. Anything that we've not covered before we jump off? And for Ben Undercard. No, has he been announced now? Uh, Felix Cash, he's and and then there's a few Salem fighters on. Uh, Lyndon Arthur is on the undercard to be fair to them. That What's that for? What's that for? Ben Eubank, yeah, yeah. It needs to be a good undercard for pay per view, don't it? So, Benny Boxing says, similar vein, I know it's off subject, but what you think of Eubank, Ben? So, Andy, we'll come to you first. I know we keep touching on this, but it's such a big fight that it's worth... Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if you've seen any of our other shows, Benny, but I think we've all we've all kind of said at one point or another, we didn't want to see this fight happen. I still don't want to see the fight happen. I'll watch it uh, uh, because it's becoming a bit tasty, but... It don't do any of them any any favors. It, it, I don't see the upside for either fighter, win, lose, or draw for either fight. I don't see the upside. What does it do for Ben, other than make him a lot of money, get bragging rights for his family, and same for Eubank, gives them bragging rights and gives them a lot of money. But as far as I mean, Eubank, you can understand. Eubank's not a a legacy fighter. He's a money fighter. There's nothing wrong with that. If that's what he wants to be, there's nothing wrong with that. You don't know ben, that Ben right. talks about wanting to win world titles, but you don't come out of your weight class no. and move up two weights to, no, sorry, three weights nearly. You don't move up three weights nearly and then have to bore yourself back down. He's looking massive, Ben. He's looking huge. How is he going to lose that muscle and, and still carry the same power and the same energy back down at welterweight? Look at what he did to Kell Brook. It's, this is a massive, massive, massive mistake. Do I think he hangs with Eubank? Yeah, I do, actually. I do. Um, I think it's going to be a very good fight. One of them will get stopped. I think it's going to be a very, very good fight. It will be brutal as well, just like, you know, the father's. But I don't think it does either of them any favours. It does uh, nothing for credibility, does it? No. And, and, and I think I just think it's such a big mistake. It's a real bad decision from, from Ben's management camp. It really is. I don't understand. They're just looking at pound notes, in my opinion. They're not looking at Ben's future. They're not looking at his career. 
He should have learned from Kelbrook and gone, this is stupid. I know Eubank's not Triple G. He's not the he dangerous he, Triple he, G. He Andy, let's have it right. They obviously don't fancy fighting any world champions, do they? Not right now, they don't. Clearly. Yeah, they obviously don't think he's good enough to beat any of them. No. No, they don't. No, but, but Cole, there, there are fighters. There are fighters. Keith Thurman is, is one. He could have took on Keith Thurman, probably beat him. Because Thurman's coming to the tail end of his career. And that's why okay. I don't agree with you about the legacy bit. Because if he's interested in his legacy, he'd be jumping in with the likes of Thurman rather than going for the pound note. But I think he is, mate. In himself, I think he is. I think he's getting bad advice. He calls the shots, though, don't he? No. He, he does. He's a fighter. He calls the shots. No, he, he does. doesn't, mate. He, he, he does. does. He's... He doesn't. He believes in what his management and what his promoter have done so far for him. And but he's why is old man not advising him saying. then? Why is his old hey. man not? Why is his old man not advising him? He stays out of it, don't he? But if he you see him become a bit of a lapping start, you jump in, wouldn't you, and say, "Look, Connor, have you considered?" I think, this I think that's a bit far. I think it, I think that's a bit far. He's not a laughing stock. He's not a laughing stock. That's a bit far. Well, it's a bit of a circus of a fight for me. Thing I would say with Anthony Sims, he's supposed to be like a father, a father figure to Conor Ben. So I think if if he did think it, it was you know not a good idea. I, I think he against it. And with the zone, what I think they're hoping for for their Mister Sir post Anthony Joshua, because I think whoever he fights next, I think he will be sort of pay per view star three four years years and i think this is sort of a coming and, and, and i think they put their eggs in the basket that kind of ends their goal forward but sure beating a Furman or beating an ugas or someone like that would have done a lot better job than this would have in terms of establishing him wouldn't it and also he stays at, he stays but, at weight he stays at weight and he's, he's not he's not you know he's not chancing the, the dangers of coming back down, balling yourself back down, it, it's no mean feat. It, it's like, you know, loads of fighters over the years. Yeah. So, I, don't think he'll, I don't think he'll be in the Kelbrook scenario because he's in the gym all the time. I think one of the Kelbrooks was he, he would go on the bender for, I don't know, a fight. No, I, get, uh, I, I, hear, I hear what you're saying with that, but he's still got to boil that, that muscle off him. It's not an easy. It's not an easy task. And is he going to still carry the power once he's done that? What's he going to have left inside of him to take on these real big boys? I just, I just don't. I don't. There was no need for this fight, other than to make money. There was no need for it right the now. Truth, the, the truth is, he didn't fancy the world level in that division, did they? That's the truth of it. But, but like the second goal, they, they, they could have took. They could have took Thurman. Yeah, they yeah. Thurman. They, they obviously didn't fancy it, did they? It would have beat them. It would have beat them. So just off two weeks and off topic. If Fury versus Joshua does go down in December, do you gentlemen? This have not been called gentlemen for a while. Do you gentlemen think it's too soon for Anthony, mentally and emotionally? Clearly, money notwithstanding. Go on, Sean. Is it too soon for him mentally and and emotionally? I think it's probably the best thing he could do, being honest, because I, I don't think he would get up for, for any other fight after the run. Will he win? I don't think so. But, you know, I I generally think he's coming towards the town. I, I can't see him fighting in two, three years. So I probably this was the only chance we would get that. I think it's the best thing for him, as I say. And, uh... Uh, do I think he's, he's recovered mentally? Um, no, do you think it's too soon for this fight mentally and emotionally? Yes, is the answer because Tyson Fury is going to put him through the ringer in these press conferences. Um, yeah, he, he's going to put him through it and I'm not sure J Joshua's going to stand up to it uh, and I think come fight night he might be a bit of a might be a bit of a, a nervous wreck. Um, I mean, this is just my opinion, by the way. Uh, I, 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 I know, I know some some quarters don't like people saying anything negative against Anthony Joshua, but we are allowed opinions, 
So my opinion is uh, it could be a wreck come fight night. But I agree with Sean. This is the only opportunity he's going to get this fight. Yeah, I've got quite a different take on it. I think Andy Joshua has fought with pressure on his back for a long, long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas I think he's going into this fight, he's got no pressure. If he gets knocked out in round one, nobody would be surprised. So he's got to almost free it. I'm not saying he's going to win, don't get me wrong, but I think he'll be the most relaxed he's been in a long, long time going into this fight. Because there's no expectation on him. So, pick up the sidebar. So, I hope ben, ben, Benny Boxing said, I hope Ben wins by KO. But yes, agree with all the points that are raised. Benny Boxing goes on to say, I still think it's too soon for Ben. He needs a couple more um, for a world title fight. Ben selling is zero. It's that simple. I don't see how he beats you, Bang. That's Joe. And Benny Boxing says, I think AJ will really have the meat between his teeth. <clears throat> it's a family show for this, but I agree Tyson is too good for him. Uh, can, can I just pick can I just pick up on that? He should have had the bit between his teeth in the last fight against Usyk, and he didn't. Why didn't he? And he was fighting there. to get his belts back. He was fighting for his legacy again. He had Usyk hurting at times in that fight and did nothing about it. Why? Why is this any different? Why is he going to be more up for this fight than winning his world titles back? I just don't think he's got anything left, mate, if I'm being completely honest. Right, thank you for the comments on the side. Andy, do you want to take us out? Sean, cheers for coming on again, fella. Much appreciated. Over to you, Andy. Yeah, great, great to see you again, Sean. Don't, give it, don't leave it another six years before you come back on again. Hold on, hold on, Andy. I've got to do <laughs> Ryan jumped in in injury time. Ryan, you do make me laugh. Um, <clears throat> two bums anyway fighting each other as they won't fight the top, the top competition in their own division. Mm -hmm. Ryan, Wilder was a WBC champion when Tyson Fury beat him, you know, so how can he not be at the top of his division? He might, he might be talking about Ben and Eubank. Ryan, that, yeah, good shout. And uh, if that's the case, if you're talking about Ben Eubank, I fully agree with your comment, Ryan, to be honest. Um, Benny Boxing said, because I think he believed in his own eye, I think the outburst at the end was realisation. That was AJ. And Ryan, you'd have to confirm Ben and Eubank. Yeah, so Ryan, I agree with you. You'd have heard me say on here that I think... Um, Ben's credibility is in question by taking this fight, to be honest, in my view. So we start, so we'll finish. Andy, I'll leave it over to you to take us out. Uh, once again, and a, a big show tonight. Uh, and once again, brilliant comments in the sidebar. You lot are fantastic. Um, so thank you very much. Uh, we're off to um, the Morningside Arena at the weekend to the Carl Grease show. We're gonna. There's gonna be lots of um, uh, lots of stuff on the channel from that show. Um, so look out for it. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Um, hit the bell, and you'll you'll get notifications when everything drops. Uh, thanks for joining us. We'll be back again as usual next Thursday, seven o'clock. <laughs>